Okay, so now let's talk about some of the other stuff. Let's talk about your set asides uh, and certifications. So small businesses, you'll 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 come in and you'll you'll find different kinds of opportunity based on different certifications that your company has. So let's say that you're a woman-owned small business or service disabled veteran-owned business. You might be 8A, right? Or you may be hub zone. Those are the four um, set aside categories or certifications there that actually make a difference or a dent in the small business numbers on the government contracting side. So the, that's, those are the categories that the government measures out when it comes down to uh, um, giving out or, or like awarding more contracts to small businesses by those numbers. They, those are the four uh, categories that are being tracked. Okay. So now woman owned small business is a certification you're going to get with your SBA representative, right? You, and you can work through that. You have to prove it. Um, there are certain rules that go along with woman owned small business. We're not going to go over all the cert rules here. But there's cert rules for that. Of course, service disabled veteran owned. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's like as much as women owned is, right? It's where it's like you have to be qualified to be service disabled veteran owned. Um, 8A is a whole other program. Of course, you would go through the SBA for that as well, too. Um, and then uh, hub zone, you would uh, ultimately go through the hub zone council. Or, um, and, and, and then there are lots of other groups to, you know, to go and help you, you know, with that. But your hub zone certification is very important certification too, because this is how all that works. All right, ready? So the government, when they put out opportunities or solicitations, um, sometimes uh, if they can, um, let me just back up for a second, they will first send out what's called a sources salt, okay? So it's basically the government going out to the market as much as they can, right? And say, okay, how many women-owned small businesses have this kind of uh, skill set or past performance? And, or how many uh, veteran-owned or however, wh whatever group that the government's trying to get some more work in the hands of, right? They will put out a source of salt where they want those kinds of companies to respond to this solicitation, right, within the source of salt and say, yes, hey, we basically, the company raises their hand and say, we can do this work. Great. Okay. So if the government gets enough of them back, it's usually what's called the rule of two. If there are at least two companies who meet the qualifications, right, for the certifications as well as past performance and background, then that opportunity then can go out as small business, let's say woman owned small business or veteran owned small business or 8A or hub zone because the government will put it out when there's a good viable chance of having that, that contract be awarded to those particular small business groups, right? And the government has a big interest in doing that. So if you have been thinking about getting your certification, uh, just you're going to want to look and see what's the investment going to be on your side. Like to get your 8A certification takes, takes a, you know, it's a nice little investment in time. But it can pay dividends because this, the government can not only um, have contracts come out under those set asides, but they can sole source contracts under those particular uh, set asides, right? So the government has sole source contract to 8A, women owned, services disabled veteran owned, and hub zone. They have sole source um, contract capabilities, let's just say. Okay, so with that, um, think about the investment that it would take for you to, to have that kind of certification. Um, uh, be built up or like done for your company and will it be worth it? Uh, possibly. So one way to try to find that out, the government agencies that you're supporting, how many sole source contracts have they given out to that, um, for that, um, set aside type in the last couple years, right? That's one way to check out and see. So, and, or maybe even it's even in your niche, your NAGS codes, right? Your actual capabilities, how many sole source contracts have come out under them? Okay, so that's how you're going to be able to look and at least do some research and see is getting that um, um, certification viable if my strategy is to go after sole source contracting. Now, it's also viable by these larger prime companies when they need to find a qualified small business that has these certifications. Because remember, the government is saying we want more small business participation. And here are the four groups. The prime contractors have to then adhere to that themselves. So they, there's an onus on the prime contractors also to find more small businesses that are qualified that have these certifications, right? Which by the way, they use Teaming Pro Platform for that as well too. So um, 
having those certifications can is also a value and benefit for when you want to be a subcontractor or teammate partner right with these larger prime companies okay so there's value there as well so think about that within your strategy what is it going to take what kind of investment do you have to put in in order to get that kind of certification is it going to be worth it with that you're going to want to ask yourself like what's your exit strategy going to be i mean uh, the m a market within the federal contracting space is pretty healthy if you have a company um, that you have some contracts on, right, that, that, that you wanted to sell to a larger entity, that happens a lot. And so um, depending on whatever your exit strategy is, it's going to really heavily uh, influence your decision on whether or not you want to go after those kind of certifications. One other thing, going after certifications. So the 8A certification has a time limit that lasts about 10 years. Okay. Hub zone certification is um, that is facilitated through how many employees you have and how much uh, where your headquarters and all sorts of stuff or where your people are. Are they in hub zone um, areas? Okay, so growth will will help um, you know you know blow you out of your hub zone certification essentially, right? If you start hiring in other places that are not hub zone. Um, your veteran owned small business is veteran owned small business forever as long as you own that company. And then same thing for woman-owned small business, right? You're woman-owned small business forever as long as you own the company and follow the rules. So when you go to sell your company, you got to think about that. You, if you have a woman-owned small business and there's intrinsic value to that, right, um, then you have to sell to another woman-owned entity essentially for them to take advantage of that value. So just keeping that in mind when it comes down to the ultimate exit strategy and how you're thinking for your business.